Does your rib cage look like this? Maybe you've been told that you have a rib flare, you've got a big deep arch in your lower back, maybe you've got some tension discomfort there, you have a difficult time engaging your abs, and you're probably thinking, I'm just screwed, this is just how I'm built, there's no way I can change this. I'm gonna provide that solution for you wonderful folks who have rib flares today. In this video, we're gonna go into what a rib flare is, why it happens, and most importantly, what you can do about it. The reason why your rib cage is flared is because of gravity. And I'm not talking George Clooney gravity, folks. I'm talking about that force that is continuing to push us down into the ground. And it's our job to stay upright against that force of gravity any way that we can. And one strategy that we tend to utilize in order to be able to do this is by shifting our center of mass forward. And that includes all of the contents of our bodies. And so if this is the front side of my body, if this ball represented my abdominal contents, the back side of my body would squeeze those abdominal contents and push them forward so then I can stay upright. But here's what happens as a consequence of that. In some individuals, based on their bodily structure, range of motion that's available among other things, they might increase muscular activity of stuff on the back side of the rib cage, and that will push the rib cage forward like so. And a lot of times when you do that, you'll see that the sides get squeezed in and it essentially makes the rib cage longer front to back. And it is that folks that gives you the appearance of the rib flare. I squeeze or contract muscles and other tissues on the back side of my body. It makes the rib cage slightly smaller side to side and it pushes it forward so you can essentially stay upright. This posture will often correspond with an increase in the curve in the lower back. And sometimes you'll see the upper back flatten and tip backwards slightly, all to an effort to make sure that you don't fall. So then you might be thinking, well, Zach, if I'm just shifting my center of mass forward, do I just like push it back and life should be good and that rib flare should go away? No. And the reason why is because the tissues in your body, muscles, fascia, connective tissue, all have a little bit of tension in them at rest. And so it may be that your resting bias has a little bit more tension in the back side of your body compared to the front. And with this tension, what it does is it biases the abdominal contents, and if we're talking about the lower rib cage, more forward. So if you just try to shove your ribs backward, you might not necessarily be able to overcome the increased muscular activity in the back side of your body. And you most certainly, and this is the key folks in terms of how we fix this, you most certainly won't be able to push the abdominal contents backward as well. All you're doing is changing the location of the rib cage without necessarily creating a resting uh, tension effort in the back side of the body and changing the shape of the rib cage. And that's because when you shift your center of mass forward, the rib cage has to change its shape in order to put the ribs in that particular position. So essentially what you have to do is you have to incorporate a strategy that teaches you to push your abdominal contents from the front towards the back, get the ribs to alter their shape so they're less forward and they're more backwards and ex expanded outward. Because remember, when you push backwards, the ribs close a bit side to side. And if you can do those things, what will oftentimes happen is you won't have the rib cage flaring as far forward as it is. And the way we do that, folks, is by breathing in particular positions that work us from having a rib cage that's really far forward bringing it back and allowing the ribs to expand out to the sides, which happens with breathing. And if we can do that, we ought to have a reduction in our rib flares. And don't worry, folks, I got you covered. We're going to head to the gym next and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Let's first get into what not to do to bring the lower rib cage back. And I'm going to show you this in this position right here. But the most common mistake that people make when they're trying to change rib cage position is they force it. So you'll see people or yourselves do this. That's bringing the ribs down. Folks, I didn't change the dimensions of the rib cage whatsoever. All I did was change the orientation and that's not gonna stick. Because remember, when the ribs are flared, the diaphragm is descending. The intestines are pushed further down. We gotta do things to bring it up. If you look at my lower abdomen, when I just force the ribs down, you see how it pooches outward? When that pooch happens, that doesn't mean that my diaphragm is ascending, and the guts aren't moving upward, and because of that, 
I'm really not changing the shape of my rib cage, which is ultimately what I'm gonna try to do. Another way that people will screw this up is they just won't exhale enough. So you'll get the person who goes really soft, like so, and maybe they, they feel some abs, but they just don't get enough air out to get the closure of the rib cage that we need. So you wanna make sure that when you do the exhale, it's long, slow, and you get as much air out as possible while avoiding crunching. The last way that people screw this up is during the inhale. So they might have done a nice job of exhaling, getting the low abs smaller, getting the rib cage to come back and, and get smaller. But then when they inhale, they just let it go like it's frozen. We don't want that, folks. Whatever ab tension you've acquired from the exhale, you want to maintain that during the inhalation side of things, like so. So I feel my abs from that exhale. I'm gonna keep that same tension as I breathe in. What you don't wanna do during that piece is you don't wanna brace even further to try to keep the ribs down like so. See, I get the ribs down. I brace even further, now I'm getting that pooch. Well now, I can't get any expansion into the upper parts of my rib cage, which is really what I need in order to ensure that the lower rib cage stays smaller and less flared. The breathing sequence that is going to help you reduce your rib flare is as follows. You wanna go silent in through the nose. You want a long, slow, soft exhale, and you want the lower part of your abs to get smaller. And then you keep going. And as you keep going, what you're gonna notice is the lower rib cage is gonna drop down slightly and backwards. The lower ribs are actually getting smaller. So remember, we said that they were way far forward. That exhale is gonna help bring them back. Just like that. Then, I got a little bit of tension in my abs. I'm gonna to try to maintain that during the inhale. No more, no less. So exhale again. Have smaller. That's the breathing sequence that we need to ensure we can get the ribs to come back. Now you might be thinking, Zach, that breathing sequence seems well and good, but what positions, what exercises should I utilize this breathing strategy to make sure that my rib cage can change the shape in the manner that I want so I don't have that rib flare? That's what we're gonna go into next. I'm gonna rotate to the left two different ways. First rotation, there. The second rotation, there. I rotated both times to the left, but what was the difference? The difference was the amount of rotation. When I start all the way from the right and I go a little bit to the left, I'm still turning left, but it's a smaller amount compared to if I'm centered and I turn all the way to the left. Now I'm at my end range. Which would be easier, do you think? Well, it's easier to rotate in the early ranges of things because there's less of a range of motion demand compared to the later end range motion of things. The same principle applies when it comes to changing the shape of the rib cage. If the rib cage is all the way forward, I can't expect that I can just choose a position where it's gonna be challenged to be all the way back and get good results. No, instead I have to start in a position where the tendency of the rib cage is to be more forward. And then I'm slowly gonna work my way back to where I can get the rib cage to get smaller, come backwards a little bit, move better than ever before, and have no one mess with me. So I'm gonna show you the starting position that I would start most of my Supreme clientele with next. I'm gonna start this whole shebang off in the prone position, AKA on your stomach. Why, you might ask? Well, when I'm on my stomach, gravity is pushing my abdominal contents and airflow more forward, which guess what? That's kind of the position that my ribs are in. They're more forward. So I'm gonna start in an end range position and I'm gonna work my way backwards. And the way I'm gonna work my way backwards is by exhaling the way I talked about earlier and reaching. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my, uh, my elbows about in line with my eyes. I'm gonna drift the eyes upward. I'm gonna exhale first. Push my arms, my forearms into the ground and lift up. You don't wanna go like this. You're not pushing down. You're pushing out as you lift up. Now the nice thing about being in prone is that 
I have the ground as a constraint to prevent me from pushing the rib cage even more forward. So as long as I keep my lower ribs in contact with the ground, I'm gonna get what I'm looking for. And so I'm gonna hold this position, do the same breathing sequence that I did previously. Once you've nailed that and it's easy, folks, make sure you nail that before you move on to the next step. You want to find a position that brings the ribcage just a little bit further back. For that, we're gonna use quadruped on elbows. And so here, I'm on my forearms, I'm on my knees, just like so. Gravity's still pushing everything downward, but there's a little bit more of a challenge because now I don't have the ground being a constraint but I've also changed my leg position and things of that nature to where um, it, it's more conducive to me getting some roundedness through the lower back. Now that I'm gonna force it, but just based on the nature of the position. So what you're gonna do here is the same song and dance. Eyes are gonna be on the fingertips, you're gonna exhale, slowly reach without crunching, hold, do the same breathing sequence. Now, if that's too easy, man, you are doing so well at this. Then what you want to go with is the next most challenging variation, and that's quadruped. So with this one, it's going to be hands and knees. You're going to keep uh, a little bit of foot pressure into the ground. Same exhale and reach without crunching. Hold. Work on it. Now that you've nailed the prone-based postures, we eventually need to transition towards being on our back. Being on the back can be the most difficult because gravity is essentially pushing you in the opposite direction. If you have a lot of muscle activity, it's pushing you more forward, you may end up utilizing a compensatory strategy, like we talked about before, aka the crunch or pulling the ribs down, or forcing them, I should say, that doesn't get you what you want. So you need something that bridges the gap. For that, I like the sideline position. And so when you're in sideline, you can start with some various side plank variations. I'm gonna do short lever, and what that means basically is I'm gonna bring my knees up just like so. I wanna keep uh, my forearm and knees roughly in line. And I might start, if I'm just brand new to this, I haven't done a lot of breathing-based stuff, by just pressing my forearm and hand down into the ground. You can even use your other hand for support like so. And you should feel the bottom abs engage. Now, I'm gonna come a little bit forward like so and have my chest turn towards the ground. And the reason why that is, is kind of an intermediary between the prone postures that we were in and sideline. So I'm gonna go just like this right here. That way I still take advantage of gravity. It's not super end range yet, breathe. And no folks, the breathing sequence has not changed. If done that, you're feeling the abs, you're feeling pretty good about the way things are looking. You want to kick it up a notch, Emerald Lagasse style. What you can do with that is you can come up on your knees and your hand and balance like so. Up and over. I'm still getting my chest a little bit forward towards the ground. I want to make sure I don't crunch as I do it though. And then you can up the intensity by straightening one leg or two. So you might be thinking, Zach, I nailed all those variations. You got anything a little more challenging? Well, in my opinion, the most challenging is going to be on your back. And the reason why is because it's very easy to just force the ribs down. We don't want that. So we're gonna try a hook line maneuver, just like so. And what that's going to entail is you're gonna line your back, knees bent, put a ball between your knees. It's gonna help you engage the uh, adductor muscles a bit. Hands on your belly to start because you want to make sure that the ab wall gets smaller and the lower rib cage gets smaller. And all you're going to do here, folks, you're going to just put a slight bit of foot pressure down into the ground. You don't want a crazy tuck because the tuck's going to get the abs to pooch out. So I'm going to just get a little bit of foot pressure down into the ground. I don't want a bridge either. The bridge is going to push the ribs more forward. Just slight pressure so you get a little bit of the glutes and hamstring. From here, you're going to do the same breathing sequence like you've done before. Make sure the lower abs get smaller. And then the ribs ought to get smaller and come backwards. Now, if they don't, you can throw a reach in the mix. I would try one of two. If you're someone who's a little bit more thin frame, narrow or rib cage, like me, you can go with a one arm reach at about a 90 degree angle. That oftentimes helps. 
just like that. And actually, you can see when I do it, so I'm gonna get my foot pressure, check out my ribs. Goes down way faster than if I just did the breathing. If you're someone who's a little bit wider framed, you got a wide rib cage, what you can do is you can raise your arm at about 110 degrees of shoulder flexion, same song and dance. And if that's super difficult, you're feeling really frisky, lift the opposite leg up really towards the glute. Or in that position. Now folks, all of those drills are nice. You're gonna see some pretty quick changes with low rib cage position, but you're probably thinking, Zach, last time I checked, I don't live life on the ground. How in the heck can I reduce the rib flaring when I'm standing, doing my thing day in and day out? The way you do that, folks, is by applying this concept to higher intensity activities, AKA your training. One of the easiest ways that I think to teach this concept is with a landmine press. So that's what I'm gonna show you on this right here. And basically what you wanna do is you wanna set up, like you're gonna do a landmine. The way I coach that is I make sure my weight's on my butt bones or my ischial tuberosities. And what you wanna do is you can put one hand on the rib cage you're gonna take a silent inhale. You wanna exhale, you wanna to try to maintain your body position and reach the weight forward as far as you can. Like that. And if you do it right and you don't lean forward, which is the most common screw up, you're gonna get a change in the rib cage position, but it's under a higher intensity effort, like so. Stay there, inhale. That's gonna help push the ribs back. Back down. Exhale, reach. Inhale at the top, bring it down. So I go exhale to position, silent inhale at the top, exhale back down, rinse and repeat. And there you have it folks. Now you know why the rib flare is there. You have some strategies to reduce the flare. And if you do those things, it ought to improve your mobility and have you moving better than ever before. Did you find this video useful? Did you hate it? Either way, hit the like and subscribe button and comment below. Tell me what you liked or tell me what you'd like to see more of. I'm here to help you improve your movement capabilities. And the only way I know how to do that is if you tell me how I can best serve you, because I'm here for you. If you want to learn more or you're into this type of breathing-based stuff, I would definitely also check me out at ZachCouples.com. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in. You've been an incredible, outstanding audience. I hope that you keep it real but not to extend where things go wrong. Stay hungry, stay learning, stay moving. And I'll see you next time.